and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I am Luke Owen, and this is Wrestling News. Last night's crown jewel from Saudi Arabia saw but not a whole lot happening, really, apart from Cena getting his throat spiked out of existence in a fantastic finish and JD McDonough taking bumping lessons from SummerSlam 2005 in the pre-match. But the biggest news came in the women's title match between Io Sky and Bianca Belair. Towards the finish of the match, Sky clashed with her long-running teammate Bailey, but found new help from a returning Kyrie Sane, who left the company during the 2020 pandemic. There have been reports of her return for the last week or so, with Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful noting that she was a priority signing for the company, adding they wanted to sign her back to WWE during the mass rehires of 2022. Mike Johnson of PW Insider reported that Sane could be back as soon as Crown Jewel, which proved to be correct. It's a big return for WWE and sets up the potential for a fantastic storyline over on the SmackDown side of things, with Damage Control and Sane, as well as Bianca Belair and Charlotte Flair, who both have claims to the world title. And let's be honest, SmackDown has really needed this all year long. And reportedly, there are more returns for WWE's women's division in the works. Mike Johnson of PW Insider reported last week that Saray, who left NXT last year, was in deep negotiations for a United States wrestling return, but not to WWE. Well, Sean Ross Sapp noted on his Crown Jewel post show that WWE are working on bringing Saray back to the company. In a separate report, Fifle confirmed Kermit's Reddit post that more names could join the two in a new group who are being described as close friends and stars no one will see coming. Now, if you'll indulge me, I would like to take a slight detour into Speculation Station, because Dave Meltzer wrote in the most recent Wrestling Observer newsletter that there are currently no dates scheduled for Mercedes Monet with New Japan or Stardom. Monet suffered an ankle injury back in May when she was supposed to win the NJPW Strong Women's Championship, a belt that was only created for her to win. She instead called an audible in that match for Willow Nightingale to get the title, who then dropped it to Julia in July. The reported plan was that when Monet was fit and healthy, she would have a match with Julia for that belt that was designed for her to win. But Meltzer's new report also says there are no plans for that match either. However, before we all jump on the WWE return bandwagon, he does add when she's ready to return, they have to decide on costs and dates, they being Bushi Road, the owners of New Japan. But if you'll allow me, let's jump on that bandwagon for just a second. Because we're now looking at a storyline where Sky could split off from damage control to team with Sane and potentially Saray and others. So Bailey is going to need some friends. And who is a better friend for her than Mercedes Monet? Apart from Dakota Kai, of course. There had been some talks that an AEW move could be on the cards for Monet as she was shown on camera during the massive all-in show at Wembley Stadium in August. Some reports have even said that if she wasn't injured, she would have wrestled on that show. Obviously, a lot of this is pure speculation on my part. I am taking a report from a wrestling journalist and looking at a slightly different skew on it. But I do find it curious that New Japan have no plans for Mercedes Monet when her ankle is healed, especially as they did reportedly have plans just last month to fight for a title that was designed for her. So what do you think? Could we see Sasha Banks return to WWE? Am I insane? Let me know in the comments down below. Say, for the sake of argument, she returns at Survivor Series. And wouldn't it be amazing if you were watching that show live and in person with us? Well, you can, because we are going back to the Long Arm Pub and Brewery in Shoreditch for a live watch party for Survivor Series with another live edition of No Holds Board. We had such a fun time yesterday with Crown Jewel, and you can have fun with us too and be part of moments like this. And who's oh. this place? Dakota Kai makes the save! Oh. No, no, it's Dakota Kai! It's Dakota Kai! It's Dakota Kai! It's But I think that's enough talk of returns for now. 
What about debuts? In yesterday's WrestleTalk News, we discussed the impending free agency of New Japan's Will Ospreay, ahead of Ospreay's IWGP United Kingdom Championship match with Shota Umino at New Japan Power Struggle yesterday. Ospreay very much seemed to confirm that he was on his way out of the promotion once his deal expires in February of next year. And if the boys' Twitter activity is anything to go by, WWE could be the next home for Will Osprey. As not long after going through his war with Umino in Osaka, Osprey seemingly enjoyed himself some crown jewel, or at the very least, the opening bout between World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre. Following Rollins' win and WWE's Twitter post of the result, Osprey reacted to it with a cheeky pair of eye emojis. Ooh, what a tease. And this would lead to Rollins responding to Osprey, enticing him to join WWE, saying, The water is is warm. That just makes it sound like you're pissed in the pool there, Seth. This is, of course, not the first time this year that Rollins and Osprey have shared a little bit of cheeky back and forth online. Ahead of Money in the Bank on July 1st, Osprey would tease an appearance at the O2 in London with Rollins reacting to the Englishman's trademark bruv. The two also had a quite infamous exchange on Twitter during the Seth Rollins isn't cool phase of his WWE career, where Rollins bragged about his bank account while arguing where the best wrestling on the planet was. It was not WWE at that point. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that matches with Rollins and AJ Styles could be a selling point for Osprey to move to WWE, adding that WWE are absolutely in the picture for Osprey's destination. There is also, of course, All Elite Wrestling in all of this. The company has clearly been laying out the red carpet for Osprey throughout the year, not only having him on TV and on pay-per-view in prominent roles, but also giving him the most massivest of platforms possible with a featured match at All In. However, Osprey has had his own joking issues with AEW after getting a tattoo of the number of tickets sold for All In, and then the conflicting numbers coming out from the local councils about what the actual attendance figure was. So who knows where he'll end up? As Meltzer puts it on Wrestling Observer Radio, it will boil down to who is ready to give him the best offer. Another big talking point from Crown Jewel was the utter annihilation of John Cena at the hands of Solo Sokoa, in a fashion that can really be compared to SummerSlam 2014 with Cena's match against Brock Lesnar, Sokoa soundly defeated Cena following 11 Samoan spikes. Go check out Ollie Davis's full review of that show. Afterwards, WWE and Cena milked the fact this could be Cena's final days in the ring with an emotional standing ovation from the Riyadh crowd, while Michael Cole again referred to him as the GOAT. Last month, Cena said during a press conference that once the actor's strike is over, he will be leaving WWE and going back to his acting work. But there is currently no end point for those strikes just yet. So, like a good wrestling pundit, I'm going to find out my answer to what's next for John Cena by going to his Instagram. It's, um, it, it's a picture of of David Beckham. This is the second news story in two days where I've talked about ex-Man United players. It's weird, isn't it? While this could be seen as typical Cena randomness, some have theorized that it could be a suggestion that Cena's next appearance will be in Paris, which is the rumored destination of next year's backlash, as the image is of Beckham playing for Paris Saint-Germain, while others have instead suggested that the image is a further teaser of retirement, as the image of Bex was from his final match as a football player. I guess we'll have to Wait and see what happens. See. Can't see him. And lastly, on Crown Jewel, while it was a good show and all, one thing that it definitely was missing was some meat-slapping action, something Intercontinental Champion Gunther usually can assist with. But the ring general was a surprising omission from the Crown Jewel card, instead headlining another WWE Live event in Rochester, New York, where he defended the title against Ricochet and Shinsuke Nakamura. While this isn't overly noteworthy given the absence of other top stars on the show like Becky Lynch and Kevin Owens, it seems as if there is more to this absence than would first appear. In an interview with Crone, Gunther revealed that due to strict residence regulations, he is not able to leave the United States for the next six months. This is the same reason why Ray Phoenix couldn't be on All In. This not only affected Gunther's availability for Crown Jewel, but also seemingly rules him out of Elimination Chamber in February as that will be in 
Australia. However, fear not for all you German fans, as Gunther will be back and ready and able to travel to Basha Berlin next August, a show he should absolutely headline against Ilya Dragunov, but that's just me. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of the WrestleTalk News. Go and watch Ollie Davis's full review of Crown Jewel right now. Kyrie Sane returned to WWE. Roman Reigns predictably won. And John Cena got squashed. Or should I say, spiked. I'm Ollie Davis, and this is my review of WWE Crown Jewel 2023 in about 10 minutes.